Welcome back friends to the shop. Today we're going to be taking a look at a tool that I've been very excited to get my hands on for some time and that's the Prozzi Beam Cutter. So what is a Prozzi Beam Cutter? Well it's essentially a chainsaw for your worm drive skill saw. Now this regular skill saw of course is going to take a seven and a quarter inch blade which sounds like a pretty good sized blade until you need to cut anything bigger than a two by four and then it won't reach through. Let's go ahead and install this together. Came with this bushing here that replaced the factory bushing so that drops in. Now remember on our skill saws we are back, always backwards thread. Why backwards thread? Well the way that it rotates so that when, you, when it's turning, it's always tightening itself and not loosening itself. You don't want a loose skill saw blade. It'd be like having the devil's Chinese star flying around on your job site. Would not be very nice. And of course, good old American half inch bolts. None of your metric nonsense. And of course, the beam cutter came with the instructions, but you guys know me. You know, of course, we can't be slowed down and bothered with that. Uh, but it looks pretty self explanatory. Uh, so we'll tighten, let's see, backwards, we'll tighten this up cinch this up here. If you're going to manufacture things, try to make the, the bolts all the same size. I've had to go back to my toolbox now three times to get three different size of wrenches. It'd be nice to have everything the same size. That's, some, that's what I would call good style uh, when you're designing industrial machinery, right? I've been scratching my head a little bit on how to tension the chain, but I finally figured it out here. Okay, so you loosen this cap screw. There's a little uh, lever with a pawl on it there that connects onto this, so you can loosen this and then put a little pressure on there and you see how that puts, puts tension on the chain. I've got that chain pretty tight. Uh, you can see there because it's a brand new chain and we're no, we know that's gonna stretch. So the astute observer uh, will notice that there's no oiler for this, right? Um, so I had to refer to the uh, manual and they said basically put some silicone spray on there. I'm no electrician, but that doesn't, Sound good. Well, anyway, what I was hoping to show you was the maximum depth of your traditional skill saw. So we have a two by, or four by eight here. You can see when everything's said and done, it doesn't cut very deep. So if you need to cut a beam like this, you've got to cut from all four sides. Now there are other options, uh, like the big skill saws here. Now we're getting up into a, uh, what's this, a 10 and a half inch blade or so. And that's a lot better. But even here, we're still unable to cut yeah, we probably with this one, we probably almost cut to the midway point at or near. So, but we're still looking at two cuts. I'm going to use this big speed square here as a guide. It's to, if you want real precise cuts uh, with your skill saws, this is kind of a, a pro tip. You can use a speed square or something like that to give you a guide to go along. Well, I'll tell you guys, that was actually quite nice. Uh, very smooth, very balanced, easy to control. Um, I'm totally shocked at how, how clean the cut is. I was expecting that to really do, to, there'd be a lot of tear out. Uh, let's flip that over and look at that. I mean, that's a clean, that's, that's as good as a guy could expect right there. Look at the, the exit on the, on the back end here. Uh, no tear out, nothing nasty. So I'd like to invite you guys to subscribe. I, there's a whole bunch of new people that are watching um, that are not subscribed. I keep an eye on the analytics and uh, that way you can keep an eye on the channel and get notifications. And if you enjoy these, take a minute and click the thumbs up. So this will be a 45. Let's take a look at that miter. That's a big, that's a big miter there. Oh my goodness, public school strikes again. 
pretty close. I know this uh, on that last bit right there, I did get off. I wasn't paying attention to it and it started to wander a bit. It does take a little bit of practice for sure. Let's see how it mates up with the other piece. How's that look? Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty impressive. That's a, that's, it works better than I thought it would work. What a time saver that would be. Now, how well does it rip? Could a guy make a board with it? So you can literally cut boards with it. Now it's not super precise, that's for sure. Uh, you can see, <laughs> you see right there. So I don't know that cutting boards is, is really its forte, but it's pretty versatile. And you know, it could, a lot, these, these sort of things, you know, my experience with them is I'm using this for the very first time. Um, so there is a learning curve, you know, you, you just, you don't, you don't just sit down to a typewriter or a keyboard and know how to use it, right? It takes time and uh, to learn how to do it. All right, guys, so what do we learn about the, the beam cutter here? This is not a paid product endorsement. You know, I'm really shying away from that, guys. I, I get, guys send me stuff all the time. I get, I mean, the UPS guy is my best friend now. I mean, we just get tons of packages of things of people that the reason why they're sending it, some people send it for just because, just out of kindness of their own heart, or some people like to see things reviewed, and I don't review everything that's sent. But especially when it comes from manufacturers, I'm really, really shying away from that because I just find that I can't be, it's hard to be objective. I mean, you don't want to completely destroy something that some guy has invented and put a lot of work into, and, and I, I just don't like it. And the fact that you guys support us for the channel and, and the super chats and the memberships allow me, I can go out and I can just buy this stuff on Amazon with my own money. We can do a video, 100% objective. I, I, I have no dog in the fight. So that's kind of where I'm coming at with, with these videos. All the, the Amazon, the cheapest on Amazon stuff, I buy all that stuff. I don't get any deals. I pay the same price as you guys. It's, it's the way it's gotta be. I mean, really, to be honest. Uh, so what do we learn about this? It's a pretty good tool. Um, I, I don't know that I would have bought one. Well, I know I don't have one <laughs> uh, before. I lo I've looked at them, I was familiar with it, but after using it, it, it does have a place, but it's very specific. You know, it's a very niche, niche tool. If you need to cut a lot of big beams and a lot of big timbers, it's gonna be a good, it's gonna be a good tool for that, uh, no question. It's gonna be fragile though. I just think about my days in construction, you know, and you know how it is. You've got stuff in the job box or you're throwing it in the back of your van or you're throwing it in the back of your truck. The possibility of this thing getting damaged is very high. So you're gonna to have to be really careful with it, almost maybe even make a box for it. So that's, you know, that's a bit of a downside there because it is gonna be fragile, but I don't know how else you would do it. Quality wise, does it work? Is it pleasant to use? Uh, does it get good results? Absolutely. And for the price, you know, $200. So you're looking at, you're gonna pay a couple hundred dollars for a saw. You're gonna pay a couple hundred dollars for the attachment. So you're into it, let's say four or 450. You're getting a saw that can cut 12 inch material. Um, maybe do some miters, maybe even do some arches. You know, you've ever cut, cut, tried to cut a radius in uh, like a knee brace? I mean, I spent hours and hours doing those by hand back in the day. Um, this is probably something that you could rough that out and cut a little bit of a radius. And, and you can't do that with a circular saw. I don't know, apart from some really specialty band saws and things, um, so it's, it seems to be pretty good. Uh, looks like it fits all sorts of saws, skills, Makitas, Bosch's, um, lots of different brands. There was, a, there was an extra bolt in there, I think for the Makita Arbor. So seems pretty versatile. Um, but a great little product, um, good quality, good components, um, no complaints whatsoever. I'll, I'll keep it on the saw and use it. Um, I think I'll use it fairly often, um, just save, especially when you're working with the big stuff. So I'll put a link to this, an Amazon link, and um, if you guys wanna uh, get one or if that's something that would be useful to you, and um, that's about it. So thanks for watching. Keep us in your prayers. May God bless you and your families, and we'll see you. Oh, I've got something cool, cool coming up. I know about the wood stove. I know it's starting to crumble apart and it's any day now. It's the whole thing's just gonna turn into dust. Um, we're gonna be rebuilding that. I ordered, ordered brand new barrels, a whole new kit. Also, I'll be doing a video on that. I'll show you how you can build your own double barrel wood stove for about 300 bucks. Uh, so 
that's pretty hard to beat for a shop stove and they're uh, and they put out a lot of heat so that's coming up i'm just waiting on the last components among lots of other very fun things so thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video